Hi and welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Anna. And I'm Sarah. And in today's video, we've teamed up with our friends at Wiggle to bring you some of the best summer accessories for running. As the temperatures get warmer and those base layers get left behind, these are some of the summer running accessories we think you should consider taking on your run with you. We've been through the best of the stuff on offer from our friends at Wiggle. And we're not paid by the brands to say nice things about any of these products. So you can guarantee that these are mine and Sarah's genuine opinions. Yeah, so stay tuned for some headwear, hydration gear, plus some accessories too. But first though, if you are new around here, please do help us out. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we bring out new videos every week. This is the Buff UV Plus Cool Net headband. And for those eagle-eyed among you, you may recognize this from our winter running accessories video. Well, it's also pretty useful in the summer. So for me, it's nice to have a headband on when I go out running in the summer to mop up some of that sweat. I especially get particularly sweaty at the back of my ponytail, stops the sweat going into your eyes, keeps the hair out of your face as well. But not only that, you can also use this buff in a number of different ways. You could use it as a spare hairband, for example, if you haven't got one to tie up your hair. You can also pop it around your wrist, which is really handy for wiping the sweat off your brow. And if you forget a face mask, as so many times I've done that, it also does cover up as a pretty good backup face covering. Just about. So it's super lightweight and it's also really great for staying in place on your run. So it's not gonna budge once you've got it on. And let's not forget that it is super bright and colorful, which is exactly what you want from some summer running gear. So this is the DHB run cap. It's a super lightweight and breathable hat, perfect for sunny runs where you want the sun out of your face, but you don't want something heavy weighing down on your head. Now the back of this hat is all mesh paneling, so it's really nice. There aren't any structured panels or rods on it, so it means that you can scrunch it up really small and tuck it into a vest, a waist belt, or just even into the side of your trousers or shorts as well. One thing that I really like about this hat is that the Velcro on the back of it is just one strip. So that means that you're not having to fold over two strips, which for me personally, I find often gets caught in my hair and is quite painful to pull out. Another thing that I like about this hat is that there are two loops on either side to hold your sunglasses. So if you are going through a darker section or you don't feel like you need your sunglasses for a certain bit, you can just pop them on the top there. All in all, a really nice hat for summer running. It barely feels like it's on your head. This is the Airlight Split Cap from Ron Hill. And the reason why it's called a split cap is because the peak of it has a split down the middle, which means that you're able to fold it in half and then up on itself so that it can pack up really, really small. So a great addition if you're going out for maybe a day on the trails or you don't know what the weather's gonna be like and whether you're gonna need a cap or not, this packs up so small, it'll fit right in to your running vest. So although you'll be paying a little bit more for the Ron Hill split cap than some other running caps on the market, it is made out of such a lightweight mesh material that not only does it pack up really small, but it also feels incredibly lightweight on your head. So it doesn't feel like you're gonna get too hot when you're out on a run. And also the benefits of running with a cap on your head is that if you do start to get a bit hot, you can always pour some water over your head or onto the cap first, so that that holds on to some of the water to keep you a bit cooler. So that is the Ron Hill split cap. If you're not a fan of a cap on a run, then perhaps a visor might suit you better. So this is the DHB Run Visor, which keeps the sun completely off your face, which I need right now, which is strange in the UK. So this visor has an elasticated band around the back. It also has some toweling material in the front of it, which is where your head probably gets quite sweaty when you run. So that's there to soak up the extra sweat and stop it from running into your eyes, which is never a good thing. In fact, top tip for you, if you do find that you are getting sweat in your eyes, especially if you've put sun cream on, which stings when it goes into your eyes, then just pop some Vaseline across your eyebrows, which will create a bit of a barrier to stop that sweat going into your eyes. So the DHB Run Visor is incredibly good value for money. It comes in one size and because of the elasticated band that goes around the back you shouldn't have too much of a problem when it comes to fit and staying put on your head. 
Next up, onto hydration, which is especially key in the warmer months because you're going to be sweating more, so you can become dehydrated more easily. Now, how much water you need to carry with you will depend on the distance and time that you're running for. If you've been carrying around a solid water bottle with you, you might want to consider taking a soft flask with you. This is the 500 milliliter 42 soft flask from Salomon. The cool thing about this water bottle is firstly, the name 42 refers to the 42 millimeter cap, which is plenty big enough for popping ice cubes or electrolyte tabs into the bottle. But the really cool thing is as you drink, the water bottle shrinks like so. So you always know how much water you've got left with you whilst out on your runs, which I find super handy to know. The top of the water bottle is really nice to drink from, no problems at all. It doesn't have a bad taste from it when you drink from it. Um, and yeah, really nice to clean. I really rate this. Perfect for chucking in a vest or into a belt when you're out on a summer adventure. This is the Innovate Speak Up 0.2. It's been a lifesaver at many a race for me. You will see that many races and these days are trying to become a bit more sustainable. So eliminating the use of single plastic at aid stations and asking you to bring your own vessels along to fill up with water. So the Speak Up's a really good option for this because it is reusable. It's completely collapsible. It folds up on itself. It's got a little hook so that you can tuck that into itself as well. It holds 200 millilitres of water, so that's why it's called the Speed Cup 0.2. And it just means that you can whip it out of your pack really easily, put some water in, have a drink, and then go on your way. Hence the speed in the title. Not only is it more sustainable and better for the environment, but we will probably see a lot more races asking us to bring our own reusable vessels along for aid stations after the coronavirus pandemic, because if you've got your own thing to drink from, then it just reduces the amount of person to person contact. And so therefore, not only is it better for the environment, but it also helps to stop the risk of spreading the COVID-19 virus. So this is the Innovate Speak Up 0.2, a handy little number to have for any kind of run, race, or even just a day out hiking. So this is a very nifty little water bottle. It's the Spy H2O Companion 240 milliliter water bottle. So it's designed to work alongside a spy belt, which we'll come onto a little bit later, but you could also fit it onto other waist belts or even just onto the waistband of your shorts and tights. So the design of the bottle is designed to sit nicely on your hip without bouncing around too much. It's also nice and squishy and it's got a silicon jet nozzle. So it's really easy to get water out of and really nice to drink from as well. All in all, I think this is a great little bottle if you want something to take out with you this summer on the trails. Now, if you want to carry a lot of water with you, then you might want to upgrade from a bottle to something like a reservoir. This is the Ultimate Direction 1.5 litre reservoir, which is kind of in the middle of the range of reservoir sizes that you can get. One bit usually being the smallest, and then it can go right up to three litres or more. So yeah, 1.5 being how many litres of water you can carry in it. The design of this reservoir is really nice. It's got a nice large opening at the top for easy filling up and cleaning as well. The tubing's really lovely. I didn't find that it was kinking and it sat really nicely around my shoulder. Also, thanks to the new Piva materials in this reservoir, it doesn't have any taste, which is quite unusual. Quite often you can get that kind of silicony, horrible taste. And when you get to the bottom of it, your water tastes a little bit funny, but I didn't have any problems with that with this reservoir. So all in all, a really great option for if you want to be carrying slightly more water than in a typical bottle whilst out with you this summer. This is the Innovate Venturelite 4 pack, a real great introductory pack for any of you runners who may be considering running with a vest on, but are perhaps concerned about what it will feel like to have the additional weight. So this pack is great because you can get four liters of kit and three liters of water or a combination of both. So at the front, there's room for two 500 milliliter soft flasks. And then you can also pop a reservoir bladder in the back as well, or you can substitute that for more room to take out additional layers, waterproof jacket, anything that you might need to take out on the trails with you, or if you're going out for a longer run. So the VentureLite 4 vest is completely adjustable and has the two straps at the front that you can tighten or loosen as you need to. And it also has two around the side that are also adjustable. So as well as the pockets that you've got, you've got these bungee elastics inside them. I like to pop that 
that around the top of my soft flasks so that if they bounce and are looking like they're going to fall out then it stops them from doing that. If your run or day out on the trails is a little more adventurous than just trotting around your town then there are also elasticated straps at the sides towards the back that you can adjust to put your poles in as well if you need to take poles with you. As well as being a great running pack for beginners if you're not used to wearing one it's also super lightweight for those days when you're going out for maybe a bit of a longer run than usual and you wouldn't normally take water unless it was a particularly hot day so summer running accessories wise you can't really go wrong with a really lightweight vest like this one so you can carry some extra water with you on those super hot days. So this is the Aeron Ultra Race Hydration Vest from DHB. It's a really nice pack and perfect for long summer activities. So it's got up to three litres of hydration storage in it. You can fit two 500 milliliter soft flasks in the front and a two litre reservoir in the back. Pockets is something that you are definitely not short of in this vest as well. You've got lots of different separated ones in the front for your phone and for gels and soft flasks. My favorite pocket is probably this zip one on the side, which I personally stash gels in and it's great for halfway through a race when you just want it easily access a gel in there. It's also got a little safety whistle on the other side, which is really nice to have. The only thing I did find with this vest is when I wore it for a half marathon straight out of the box, I did find that it rubbed a little bit on my neck, but I stopped, readjusted it, and then it was absolutely fine. And you can find the perfect fit for you. It's got really nice, quick attachments on the front, which are really nice to attach. And yeah, really comfortable, really lovely vest. Now, if you don't wanna wear a vest or an outfit a long run to carry water, you might wanna consider a larger belt. So this is the Race Belt 5.0 from Ultimate Direction. It's got lots of really useful pockets in here. The, my favorite one being the key pocket, which sits on the outer waistband, super useful. You've also got a really large main compartment and a little zip compartment on the inside to carry your phone as well so the belt weighs 71 grams and it can carry up to 0.8 liters of storage so plenty of room to carry a 500 milliliter soft flask in there um, you can also add to it as well so ultimate direction recommends their adventure pocket for adding to the belt if you need even more storage but you've definitely got enough room in here for a 500 milliliter soft flask your phone gels a bank card whatever you might need for a summer adventure Now on to accessories. I'm starting off with another belt. This is the Spy Belt Water Resistance Performance Belt and it is perfect for carrying your key items when out on a run. So it's just got one main zip compartment which is encased in water resistant material and top tip from spy belt is to layer with your larger items towards the bottom and then layer up also top tip from me is i usually wrap some of my items that might scratch my phone in an old sock just so that they can't get in and scratch them so i put my phone at the bottom and then the sock on top it's also got two little elasticated loops on either side of the pocket which you can pop gels into and the whole way around the back is elasticated so it's really nice and adjustable and you can find a good fit for you it's designed Designed to sit low on your hips and hug round. I did find that when I had it done up a little bit too tight on my first run it did start to ride up but then I adjusted the fit and it fitted a lot better. All in all a really great little item for carrying your key essentials when out on your summer runs. On to sunglasses and we couldn't do a summer running accessories video without mentioning them but do check out our full video on the running channel all about the best running sunglasses out there because there are loads to choose from so some of our favorites starting off with the oakley's so the oakley's come in multiple colorways and different lenses and the ev in their name for this particular model the radar ev path stands for expanded view so actually these are really great if you do a bit of cycling as well so the whole reason behind that is that if you you're in a head down position looking up then it's got the expanded view at the top of the sunglasses in order to block out the sun so it doesn't come in and dazzle you when you've got your head in that down position so the prism lenses are sport specific and sporty type sunglasses are obviously a personal preference so it depends whether you like the particular style of these glasses as to whether they are the ones for you but we've got a couple more coming up too 
So these are the POC Want Polarized Sunglasses. These are actually from POC's lifestyle range, but I found them perfect for running and they're great if you want a nice go-between for sporty sunglasses, but also something that you could wear when you're not doing sporting activities as well. They've got Grillamid frame construction, which means that they're robust as well as being flexible, but it doesn't feel like they're so bendy that they're gonna break or that you're at risk of snapping them at any point. They come with a nice little soft sleeve, so you are at risk if you are chucking them into a backpack, but I didn't have any problems with this at all compared to a hard case. They would fit most hard cases as well. So if you already have one, then they'll slot into that. They do come, however, with a really nice hard box in their packaging. So if you do want a hard case for traveling, but you want a soft case for just every day, then you've got both. They've got 14.9% light transmission, so a great for bright lighting conditions. And they sit really nicely on my head as well. When I went through kind of foresty, wooded sections of my run, it felt fine popping them on my head and it didn't feel like they were gonna fall off at all. They also fitted nicely when I popped them on top of a cap as well. All in all, I think these are a really great looking pair of shades, which aren't gonna break the bank, but are a really nice fit for summer running. Right at the bottom of the price scale is the DHB Clark Revo sunglasses. So these are an absolute bargain if, like me, you are forever losing your sunglasses, treading on them, scratching them, you name it. I am not to be trusted with expensive sunglasses. So the DHB Clark Revo sunglasses actually look really nice for just, you know, casual wear as well. So they're the kind of glasses I'd wear on a dog walk or maybe meeting friends down the pub, as well as going for a run because they haven't got that typical sporty style to them. These sunglasses are very lightweight. They don't budge when you're running. You do tend to get a tiny bit of fog on the lenses, especially if you're out running in the bright sunshine, but it's a bit of a cooler morning, but that's to be expected. And actually for the price that you pay for these, they are a really good budget option. Finally, on to some summer footwear. So if you want to get your hot, sweaty feet out of your running shoes and into something that's gonna be a little bit airier, then check out the Oof sandals. So these are the Ufa's original sandals and these are the Ufa's UR sliders. Now both of them contain what Ufa's call their UR foam, which absorbs 37% more impact. So these are marketed as recovery sandals. I've been wearing Ufa's for quite a number of years now and they are my favorite thing to put in my post-race bag so that I can take my running shoes off and get my feet into something a bit more comfortable and airy. So they are super comfy as you would expect from how foamy and cushioned they are. They're very bouncy. What I did find, I've not had the flip-flop style before. So having tested these ones out, I did find that I did end up with a tiny blister on the top of my foot, but I do get those from wearing flip-flops most of the time anyways, but that's just something to be aware of if you also suffer from the blisters. But the slider ones are the ones that I normally wear. These are not the ones that I would wear because they're much bigger <laughs> than my actual feet. But overall, these are a fab addition to your post-run wardrobe. And let's be honest, they're great for taking on holiday. Remember when we went on holidays? And wearing around the pool, wearing around the house. If you're working from home when it's hot, ditch the slippers and pop some sliders on instead. Whatever it is, I can definitely say that these are super comfy to wear in place of your running shoes when you're not running. So those were our top picks for summer running accessories that should hopefully get you fully kitted out for some summer mileage. But what's your key accessory? And is there an item that you absolutely could not live without? Let us know in the comments down below and we will see you next time on The Running Channel.